next on the Love You More Show. Let's talk about the first marriage that Kim was in. Okay. I don't really talk about this a whole lot. Did you know I've been married three times? <laughs> no, I didn't. Where the I hell told did him you for get 18, this attitude from? I know it. I told him for 18 years, I don't need no man. I woke up one day and didn't have one. A, a lot of us women act like we are damsels in distresses and yeah. we don't do anything wrong. But a lot of times if women would realize that we birth life, like if we're really good to a man, we can make this man the king. Do you think you get away with that type of like attitude besides the anointing because you do have white skin? Because I think if black women <laughs> did the same thing, it would be like angry black woman. Love you more. Tune in this Sunday. Hey, family, it's your nephew, Willie Moe Jr. Welcome to another amazing episode of the Love You More show. Family, I just want to be very honest with you. These last few shows been lit and you've been acting up a little bit in the comments. I'm going to be honest with you. I see all the comments. You know, the unique thing about this is that, you know, some of the stuff that I read, positive and negative, I've been able to literally take take it as um, kind of an outer body experience, if I can just be quite honest. Like literally being able to look at these comments now and to know that I'm so different than what I used to be, he no longer exists. So I can actually laugh at the person sometimes that I read about. I'm like, man, that guy was so codependent. That guy just wanted to be seen. That guy's character was so flawed. I really love the freedom that I get an opportunity to walk in now. And, um, you know, I often think about people right now who have made decisions to stay in situations, relationships, job opportunities, just Mandarin in the maze of mediocrity over and over again. It just seems like you're on a hamster wheel right now. I want to encourage you to literally decide today to love you more. Now, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. For some of y'all, you're like, no, nah, Lord, that don't sound humble, <laughs> right? But you got to understand Mark 8, 31 declares that we are to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And if you don't love you, it's really hard for you to love your neighbor the way you should, to love your children the way you should, to even love the job that God bless you with the way you should. And even as an entrepreneur, if you don't love yourself, you're going to find yourself working yourself to death. And the truth is, that's not God's best for you, right? So today, I want to talk to everybody who has ever just needed a boost. In fact, if you don't mind, put it in the comments. Just say, I need a boost, just real quick. There you go. Just put, I need a boost. Um, to those of you who say, man, I need a little bit more than a boost, just put number one, okay? I'm not talking about a boost of nothing that you ain't supposed to have. I'm talking about a boost of encouragement, right? And I believe you're going to get that today. But before you get it, I want to challenge everybody under the sound of my voice to just hit that little subscribe button. Hit that little notification bell. Make sure that you share throughout this whole entire episode, because I believe as God continues to expand our territory, he's going to put us in the right homes, on the right computers, on the right smartphone for those people who are actually hungry for change. I want to encourage you to love you more. And literally, can I just tell you this? The person that I'm about to hang out with today, um, every single morning, she's online challenging you to become a better version of yourself through Jesus Christ. I actually had the opportunity to meet her about seven years ago, and I've actually seen her go through at least 15 chapters of her life in seven years. And she looks better now than she's ever looked. So that lets me know that wholeness has arrived. The one and only real talk, Kim. Is here. What's going on, love? How are you? I am so thankful to be here. Come on, young, yes. real talk, Kim. What? I'm thankful. Listen. Living my best life. What does best life look for uh, real uh, talk, Kim, now? It's one of those seasons I'm in where I was coming home from church on Sunday. I passed our Limitless Church, and yeah. I literally, Willie Moe Jr., like, got teary-eyed. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't believe that I get to live at peace like I do. Yeah. Like, I've, I've, I, I got a great church. Yeah. I get to live downtown on the 15th floor and look out at Atlanta, Florida oh, so ceiling cool. windows. So you're not in Fed? No. Okay. I moved last year, okay. leveled up, just Le Come got on, in the gym. Up. <laughs> the okay. Come got on, in the gym. Up. I'm just so free, yeah. so thankful. I'm just like, it's, it's never too late. It That's is so never good. too late for you to get up and take your life back. Get free from everybody. Get free from what they think about you. Yeah. And just do you. Come on, man. Listen. I'm I, doing I, me. I didn't know we was going to get charged up this this quick. <laughs> this woman talked, and I'm talking about, listen here. 
The Holy Ghost or a chill just hit the back of my Come neck. On. So, Kim, I want to just tell you this. The way we do it here on the Love You More okay. show, I like to create scenarios to build conversation from. Okay. And so we have a series called Love You More that airs next month. And there's a scene that I want to show you. It's about me going to counseling for the first time as my wife in this particular scene is challenging me to go to counseling. I want you to check it out and we'll start this amazing conversation. Check this out. Time waits for no man. But if I could turn back the hands of time, I would do you better. That's what you had to love I have for you. It's like the clockwork. It never stops. This is Now I am not a marine. But I can tell you lonely overlook. But what's funny is I put a ring on your finger. We both said I do, but we both know the truth That lately we've been feeling single Cause we don't take the time to love each other right Preachers say we need communication Tonight let's be some love language Name of the song is Clockwork. Ooh. It'll be out next month. Make sure that you go pre-order, et cetera, et cetera. So the Love You More series, of course, this is the Love You More show. It actually is a series loosely based up on a relationship. But I took a lot of people's relationship. A lot of people like, oh, he's telling this scenario through, uh, through a mini series. But a lot of different scenarios as it pertains to love. And I know that years prior when we used to get on the show, you would talk about a time where you were in a relationship. And it was just really, really tough for you. And I remember the passion that you had and how it was so beneficial to our audience early on. And I don't know if you even really want to go back there, but can we talk about earlier, Kim, yeah. before she was this person and this version, when you had a son and you was trying to figure things out mm -hmm. and life wasn't necessarily exactly the way you, you wanted it, but I'm sure you had a vision of where you wanted to be. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the first marriage that Kim was in. Well, you know, I was raised in a very strict religion that said divorce was a sin. I never in my life thought that I was going to end up divorced. Mm. And so I married a preacher's kid. We were both uh, broken because you attract what you are and not what you want. Yeah. And we were both broken. We didn't know how to communicate. I do I have a bail. I'm going to do that. I'm a so lot. mad. I, I'm going to do, do that. I'm going to do that a lot. <laughs> Don't worry. I got I you. need a bail. It's like jewels. Like, <laughs> Don't worry about it. And we just didn't communicate. You know, communication kills assumption. And I think somewhere in me, my mother was so subservient. Like she was so submissive to my dad. And I, I felt like my dad, um, like he would sit right there and his water would be out. And he'd be, put his water on the table and she'd get him go run. I'd be like, he's got two feet. <laughs> Let him go get his own water. So I think from a very young age, I thought women were less than because of that. Mm -hmm. And so it distorted me. It distorted me in thinking, if I want to be a strong, powerful woman, I can't be a great wife. Mm. And so I married this boy and bled on him. How and old I was 18. So you got married the first time? Yes, 18. at 18. Now, my first marriage, you know, I've been married three times. <laughs> no, I did. I oh, did. yes. Now, three I times. Did meet I don't know which So uh, so I got married. I ran away. Okay. I don't really talk about this a whole lot, but okay. I just got a whole new book that just came out. You got to get up. So yeah, I tell everything. Yeah, yeah. But I got married. I was raised in United Pentecostal and I married our missionary son at 18, moved to Topeka, Nayarit, Mexico. Where? <laughs> That is not a vacation to destination. To beat Mexico. And I was going to be a whole missionary. That thing lasted. My mama says that wedding lasted longer than the, mar than the, than the marriage. So How long were you married the first time? I was married like, man, a year maybe. 
And we weren't even together, but like four months. That's two, so that's two weeks in, in marriage. It really, it, if I passed yeah. him on the street, I wouldn't know who he is. So it really don't count. Yeah. But we still need to talk about it because yeah. there's a lot of people out there in the world, the Christian world, like I'm disqualified because I've been married. No, we need to talk about it because it's yeah. life. Yeah. We're all trying to escape something. So what set me up for the second marriage okay. being bad was I jumped out of this marriage into that marriage in like six months. So I was at World Harvest Church. My mom and daddy sent me to World Harvest Church to be under Pastor Rod Parsley. Oh, yeah, he is. Because they yeah. thought he going to scare the hell out of you, Kim. He did. He big. <laughs> his neck big. I was so scared of him, but yeah, he didn't scare yeah. me. Yeah. He didn't scare me. I saw that piano boy. Uh, he, I, we were coming home from Israel because I was singing on the Sea of Galilee. I know the peace speaker. So you, I speak, know, you sing too? Yes. I, or, I don't really sing that good, but I realized if you sing singing. confidently people think you can. <laughs> so I'm on the Sea of Galilee singing. I know the peace speaker. I didn't no more know the peace speaker. I was a tore up from the floor up preacher's kid. He tells me on the way home from Israel, Willie Mo, he says, I see you looking at that piano boy and I ain't going to bless it. You are not ready for this. Ryan Park? Yeah. He said, if you get married, I'm going to take my hands off of you. You jumping out of the fire into the frying pan. Literally got home at 12 o'clock in the morning, packed my bags and went to Atlanta and married the boy. <laughs> What what in you would go against it if the if he oh. ever, or, or were you just like I was nobody's just gonna tell me anything? Yes, that was it. me. I was just like you're not gonna tell me what I can't do. I don't even know why I was so bad, Willie Moore. Like I look back now and think I don't know why I was so mad. I don't know why I was so angry. I don't know why I was. If you tell me I can't do it, I'm gonna do it. I didn't do anything small either. Like I would do it. I would <laughs> look. I would just dive I in. Small. I would dive in. Yeah. And so I married this boy and. I, I, I told him for 18 years, I don't need no man. Yeah. We stayed married 18 years, though, so something was okay oh, with so me. You, you stayed with the same. Yes, one. had two beautiful boys with him. I loved his guts, but I never wanted him to know it. Let's, wait a minute. Let's pause right there. <laughs> wait a minute. I never wanted him to think I, I needed him because if he knew I needed him, he would abandon me like those people that left my daddy's church when he needed them. So your dad was a pastor. Yeah. And your mom was subservient. Yeah. You didn't, you loved your mom. Cause I see, you know, you love your mom. Oh, I love my but mama. You, but you never really honored the way she honored never him. Honored. Like I would never I do. thought she was just such a wimp. And so you take on that attitude towards your second marriage. Like I'm not going to be a wimp. But you mushy in the heart form and it oh, lasts 18 Oh, man, years. I loved his guts. Like, I, I loved this boy. Like, I, I was addicted to him. Mm -hmm. Like, we were so toxic. Like, we would fight like cats and dogs, but we would fight for each other, too. Yeah. And I'm talking, like, never really. I remember my 30th birthday party. It was like we had been in ministry. We were praise and worship leaders. Oh, so y'all fighting and worshiping oh, at the same time. Fighting and worshiping. Worship pastors, like he had more anointing his fingertip than I had my whole body. And yet he couldn't get it together. He yeah. couldn't get it together. And I just couldn't understand why he couldn't get it together. Because I'm the type of person that I can fake it and make it, I thought, till it came crashing down mm -hmm. at 36. But um, I just couldn't understand why he couldn't, Willie Moe, why he couldn't just get up? Why, why are you going to let church hurt her? Why, why, you gotta, why you gotta just go to bed when you're depressed? You know, why are you going to let these people, these pastors that promise you all this stuff and then they don't follow through and now you're going to cry about it and go to bed? Mm. Like I was that kind of girl. And so I just no real, lost like, respect. You lost respect because you thought he should be a man. But I, I still loved him. Yeah. <laughs> like, but you never him. let him know. Like he'd bring me flowers and I'd be like, how much were those? Where the I hell told did him you for get 18, this attitude from? I know it. I told him for 18 years, I don't need no man. I woke up one day and didn't have one. I was like, what <laughs> I'm not what laughing at you. I'm laughing with you. No, so okay. Let me. So now we're 36. Now I wasn't always a bad wife. Like he stayed no, just, for 18 okay. years. But I look back now and I think, man, was I part of his problem? You know, like I, like I mean, we we were best friends, mm -hmm. and I, I'm the queen of making myself look really bad because. A lot of us women act like we are damsels in distresses and yeah. we don't do anything wrong. But a lot of times if women would realize that we birth life, like if we're really good to a man, we can make this man the king. You know, yeah. we got that capability. And so yeah. I, I I tend to focus a lot on what I didn't do. Mm -hmm. But 
Yeah, I mean, I think I could have done a lot of things better. What was the lesson from that particular marriage? Like, I know the first one was like two days and three months, but like <laughs> the second 18 one years. was 18 years. And when you invest that type of time, oftentimes it's like, well, I stayed too long or maybe I did this or whatever. But like, what was the lesson from that? And what was the process of you even getting to marriage three? You know, I think I stayed a lot longer than I should have. For the because, boys? Oh, yeah. For the boys and because I felt like I could I could fix him. Um, I felt like that I could I felt like that that I could I could love him into healing. Mm -hmm. He was he was addicted. I mean, he was we started partying. We stopped going to church. Mm -hmm. uh, we be, uh, we let sin take us further than we wanted to go. Mm -hmm. Cost us more than we wanted to pay. I wouldn't tell anybody what we were going through. Because I wanted to preserve him because I thought he's going to come out of this thing. And when he does, I don't want nobody to remember who he is right now because this is just a season and these people won't never forget it. I mean, what, what made you protect him instead of blast? Him? Oh, gosh, because I loved his guts. Like as, as much as we fought, I could fight him, but you better not touch him. Like I'm, I'm still to the, I'm still like this. Like I remembered him good. I remembered the way we got married. I remembered him leading praise and worship. I remembered how he could command a room. I remembered how he could prophesy. And then when we uh, hit, it was right around September the 11th where we lost, every, like we just lost our ever loving mind. Wow. And I remember thinking he's going to come back. Like he's going to come back. Like he's not going to, he's not going to stay this way. He's going to, mm. he's going to find himself again and he's going to come back and we're going to have a testimony of what God can do. And I mean, he would literally, we lived behind gates and the police would bring him to my house where he would be drunk in a house. Mm -hmm. And they'd say, either you're going to pick your kids up and go, or you're going to, we're going to take him to jail. Mm -hmm. But he, you all can't stay in this house together because I would literally wake my kids up at three o'clock in the morning to leave. So he wouldn't get caught put in jail. Wow. So I was protecting him, mm -hmm. but now I think maybe if I should have done those things, he would be better today. But I fought for him, you know, I, I loved him. I, yeah. and I do that. I, I fight. One thing I've learned is you can't keep taking medicine to people that like being sick. That's real. I want to go back to like the seed though, because, because life doesn't become unmanageable. Like voila, it's all, I think the Bible talks about the little small foxes. So you guys, praise and worship leaders, y'all doing your thing. You know, music is popping. You're looking good. You know, today's time, relationship goals. Look at them. They're so amazing. That's what we were. Like, like it's literally that. Like, what were the, because I want to really speak to this because the last, well, you know, we've been sober, doing my thing, getting cool, whole now. But there was a time where I could still do what I was doing, but I was waking up to Jack Daniels. Yeah. I was a full bottle of wine at the end of the night. Black and mild wine with the wood tip. It got yeah. so bad, Kim, I'm be honest with you. I could go in the gas station and Miss Terry, the little lady in the gas station, <laughs> oh. she knew me hell and just knew what I would get. Miss Terry would be like, wine wood tip? I was like, damn, I'm out of control. Oh. <laughs> like, I'm out of control. Like, I know that I'm out of control. I knew I was out of control when oh. I went to the liquor store. The lady said, double shot Jack Honey wine wood tip. I said, you know what? Life is becoming unmanageable. Yeah. But it, it wasn't a voila thing. True. It started off with, you know, I just need to get a, get a little drink to go to bed. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I got so much pain and pressure and this is, this is too much for me. God, I want to yes. be liked. I want to, you know, this is too much for me. Like, how could somebody do this? I'm a nice guy. I just, my reputation. And the guy's like, you have no reputation. I was like, oh, be quiet. I am a reputation. Yeah. I love it. So what was Ooh, the little- man. Like, what was the little, like, how did it start? Like, how did, was it like, okay, let's make sex better. Like, like for some people, like I drink, if I drink, we're just more intimate. Like we're not arguing. Like what was the little, what was the little Fox? What was the little insert that led this man to move into like this spiral? But you were able to kind of say, I do it sometimes, but I'm not going that far. More Love You More podcast after this. You know, all relationships start off beautiful. The love is so intense in the beginning until life happens. No matter how disciplined you are, temptation is everywhere. And we all have to fight with our internal monsters. And sometimes we fall into the trap and we hurt the ones we say we love the most. 
as you get older, loved ones pass away, and you're left to live life with a void that you never really anticipated. For some reason, people never talk about the parts of you that die when your loved one leaves the earth. It's so easy to lose who you are in the midst of all of this. I lost myself because I forgot to love myself. I'd like to take you on a journey in hopes that you can learn how to love you more. Wow. To check out the first episode, log on to loveyoumore.com. I do it sometimes, but I'm not going that far. Like, how did the season You know start? what? We were always the party. Okay. You know, even in church, we yeah. were always the party. We were yeah. that couple that we were just great. We were yeah. great fun. We were great to look at. We were yeah. Barbie and Ken. Yeah. And it was, we got burnt out from church. We got, we got sick of hypocrites. Mm. And he started, I remember, I remember on September the 11th, I'll never mm. forget it driving to the, to the gym. And I said, when are we going to get back in ministry? Like, like I'm ready to help you. Cause I am that girl. Yeah. Like I will, I will, I will go buy a building for you. <laughs> I will, I will buy the auditorium for you. You right. know, I'm just that right. girl. If I believe in you, I yeah. will, I will set you up. You'll be drunk as I'll get out. Yeah. I'll bring you a Bible and a, you know, that's just yeah. me and we'll work through it. And I'm, we're going to the gym and he's, and I said, when are we going to get back in ministry? And he said, never. I'm never, ever getting back in ministry. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. Man. It was real. And, it, and, and at that moment, I remember Willie Moe, I said, I ain't getting divorced. I am not doing this. I'm just going to, you can't, can't beat it, join them. And it was like something flipped in my head. And I literally, from that moment on, it was like, man, we were, our house was, was thumping. We were partying. And we were, we lived in Henry County, Right there in the in, in that big community, yeah. at those people that look like I mean, there was all kinds of stuff going on behind them gates. Yeah, yeah. And we just got country caught, club. Oh, country club. We got caught up in it. Yeah. Okay, nay nay and not pray praying. <laughs> and I it, just played golf though. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a lot going on up in there, and so we just lost our way. Hmm. We lost our way, and then we moved to Orlando, Florida, and lost our way even more. And I'm talking spiraled. Like my business, I owned an interior design company. Yeah, I was killing it. Money coming out everywhere, driving the nicest cars. And I lost him in the process. He was staying at home with the kids. I'm out working. I didn't even know that he was walking around with a bottle filled with vodka. Could look like water. It looked like water. Didn't even know it. I was so disconnected. So out there beating the pavement because I was addicted to ambition that I lost. We lost our way. I think you and I share that a lot. Yeah. I, I I was so addicted to ambition that I think my character was good. My integrity was good, but I just was outrunning the pace of God's grace. Yeah. And I think a lot of people expected so much from me and you. And we didn't want to let them down. Yeah. Like you yeah. don't want to let them down. People are depending on us. When do you, when do you decompress when you you're don't. us? You don't. You don't. You just and go. you can't have a bad day because people are like, wait, you're real talk him. Yeah. They'll, they'll throw your stuff at you and you're like, I just need to breathe. Yeah. Oh, no. I think that's what we, we never had that opportunity. So what do you do to breathe now? Oh, I work out. Me too. <laughs> I lift weights. Me too. And I, I see you weights. lifting weights. I lift y'all weights. Y'all see the chest meat I'm giving y'all today, don't you? <laughs> Mama, mama, I told you, mama, I'm giving them chest uh -huh. meat. My mama said, them girls ain't listening to no Jesus. They looking at their chest meat. I keep I going like this, it. mama. I'm clutching pearls that I do not have. <laughs> Let's catch this. Praise the Lord. So you're in the gym and it's like you aging backwards Yeah, now. I just, you know what? I, I gave myself permission to, I think for so long, because then I went, then I got married again and. Uh, four years ago, walked through another divorce. So, so who filed that? Who who filed? Did, when, did you say enough is enough for the second marriage? No, no, that one. I'm actually he he just. I mean, it was like he just disappeared. Oh no! I mean, I lost. We lost everything. Like he said, if you get everybody out of our lives, I will step up to the plate. We will do it. I did everything he said, to, hoping that he would step up to the plate. He would go get help. He would go to recovery. He would do whatever. He did none of it. We lost everything. And I had to move back to my mom and dad's house. And I, he just vanished. Jeez. Like literally the state of Georgia, after three years, said, you're divorced. Just, you just <laughs> He divorced. didn't even know we were divorced. What, did, what effects did that have on the boys? Oh, 
Well, you know, with the boys, I, I, it, it was probably the best thing that ever happened to me having to move back in with my mom and dad because I had so much pride. I had so much pride, Willie Moore. Like I had a, a, bought a $500,000 house. Like I was in special ed my whole life. Mm. So it was like I was proving a point for all the women you know, we can do Ooh. it out the females, you know. I'm a doctor. Yeah. I'm going to show you guys. <laughs> yes. Foster care didn't beat me. Yes. Yeah, it's always yes. this motive that this, that the heart posture is so not <sighs> with love in Jesus. It's like, it looked, it looked real Jesus-y. Yes. But it's like, no, it's to prove to you guys. That's right. That I'm important. Yes. And, and never valuable. enough. No matter what milestones you hit, it's just never enough. You're like, on to the next. Like, okay, it is. next one. It is. Yeah. So I moved back in with my mom and dad and a 10 by 10 bedroom the size of my old walk-in closet in 2006. And I remember I laid there for six months crying my eyes out, man. I was so mad at God. I was like, I cannot believe that I'm, I'm divorced. Like I cannot be, this one mattered. Like that second years. one, I'm going to tell y'all something. That second one, I loved his guts. Like he, he was, that devastated me and I, I'm mad about it. Like, I'm like, I cannot believe that I was raised in a church where you can shout it. You can do the three step, four step, five step. You can lay in the floor. You can scream, I receive it. And I ain't got nothing now. Jeez. I'm living back at my mama's with my two sons that need a mama and a daddy. Now I'm sitting at the Thanksgiving table with a chair empty. People are talking about me. Willie really more people were talking about me on social media. Like, Oh, it was devastating. And I was mad. And for six months, I laid in that bed and cried. My kids needed a mom and I wasn't there. Mm. And I remember one day my mama walks upstairs. My brother walks upstairs and they pull the cover off me and they said, get up. They said, it didn't kill you. Now get up. Mm. And I went and got a J-O-B at Belk. Which and is like Belk. a Kmart on oh, crack. Yeah, I know. We had Belk at Ole Miss. I went to Ole Miss. Like so. a Kmart on crack. Yeah. And I went and got a job in Estee Lauder and I did not know how to do makeup. I, my eyebrows still are not. You're, thank God for your makeup artist. Oh, no. She just said, Queenie, her eyebrows uh, hitting her. Look, 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 my eyebrows are not twins. Yeah. And I did Estee Lauder and that's where God healed me. God really began a healing process in me. Because I didn't know how to do makeup. I had to sit and love on people. I had to find love. I had to learn how to love. I had to learn how to listen to people's stories and realize, man, I ain't got it so bad. I got to the bottom of Kim and started yeah. realizing, man, ministry isn't what I was raised in. That's religion. Mm -hmm. This is relationship right here. Yeah. These people that ain't never walked in a church before. Yeah. And now they're sitting here looking for Jesus. They don't even know what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. But I've, had, I've experienced him. Yeah. And I'm over here crying because I lost a relationship because a whole bunch of church people are judging me. Mm -hmm. And I'm embarrassed because I'm having to work at Belk and living back at my mama's house. But really, I got it good because mm -hmm. I at least can do a do over and I can come out of this thing better as I'm smoking <laughs> in my cool. mama's backyard. Who cool filled the Kings of Newport? Oh, show. man, I was Marlboro Menthol. Marlboro Menthol, <laughs> the white one with the gold situation. <laughs> yeah. That, hey, people be like, what you do, smoke a whole pack of Marlboro? I said, if you only knew. If you only knew. <laughs> I was smoking so many cigars. And listen, the one thing about me, like I know how to position myself to look good. Because you learn how to, you know how to do that when you so much, you so full of yourself. Yes. Like, I always got to look good. So I'd be like, yeah, I smoke cigars. And even KD would be like, nothing's wrong with that. And I had to be honest. No, I'm talking about them gas station cigars. <laughs> He's like, what? Yeah, black and mild, wood, tilt. You feel me? Break them in two pieces. I'm going to hit one all day. Then I'm going three, four, five. Yes. I got so bad two years ago. I was in the back of the gas station thinking to myself, I'm smoking because I don't want to smoke in the Cadillac. The kids go there. <laughs> and it's got leather seats that stick in there. Good, good leather, you know. And I'm in the back. Good leather. I'm in the back. And I'm depressed. I'm just like, Lord, what am I? Because I made a decision for myself. Like, <laughs> despite of what, you know, social media may say, like, I went through counseling for two years. And I was just like, okay. I'm going to make a decision for myself. I don't ever do this, but it's got to be something better. And I just Come know on, I don't really? want to fight and show them. And I jump off this bridge and all hell break loose. <sighs> so now I'm smoking because I've never made a real decision for myself. Come on, Willie. I went to the University of Mississippi because my dad, yeah. he was an ex-sharecropper. He's 91 years old. He couldn't go to Ole Miss. And it sounds admirable. Everybody claps on stage. But I realized I never made a decision yeah. for myself. I went to Ole Miss because my dad, he couldn't go because of the color of his skin. Everybody applauds. Dopamine hit. Everybody's celebrating yeah. Willie 
I go to Ole Miss. I realize college isn't what it is. I make a song. It goes number one in St. Louis. Come on. $1.2 million deal with Universal. Dopamine me here. Come on. What was that for? I want to show my mom what she missed out on. I'm going to be the biggest star in the world. Then I get in the kingdom of God. They're so happy that somebody from that world is not so serious about Jesus. They push me right on stage. Come on. And I, now I'm like, y'all want Jesus? Hundreds of people come to Greenwood Christian Center. And I'm literally reading the <laughs> prayer to see people come and this is guy in the back, and he's our sound man named Mike Todd. And he's like, go, Willie. Come on. Dopamine hit, yeah. and then I make a decision for myself. And this is like, I can't believe life fell apart this way. Yeah. I'm in the back, and I'm just smoking. Yeah. And I remember sitting in the back of the gas station <sighs> on Moreland Avenue. Mm. I used to go there because my condo was right there. And I'm just like smoking. And then this guy, he just came out of nowhere. And I was like, you know, what's happening? And he looked to be homeless. And he said, mm. you, you don't really want to be back here with us. Mm. And I said, I don't. But it's like he kept showing me where I could go if I didn't get my oh, shit. I'm not sure you see the past of my ish Ooh. together. I'm, you know, me and you, when we get together. <laughs> but I, he told me, I feel like the Lord was saying, you need to get your together. Yeah. And um, it was just a moment. What was the moment when you decided, like, I got it. I got the Okay. I got to get back in ministry. I'm in Estee Lauder, but I know there's something on the inside of me. I've been divorced twice. I really yeah. love this guy. He disappeared. Now, I'm, luckily, I got my dad in the house, so at least they have an example of a yeah. guy. And then now it's like, how do, how do you get back in ministry when it feels like everybody knows yeah. what happened? More Love You More podcast after this. You know, all relationships start off beautiful. The love is so intense in the beginning until life happens. No matter how disciplined you are, temptation is everywhere. And we all have to fight with our internal monsters. And sometimes we fall into the trap and we hurt the ones we say we love the most. As you get older, loved ones pass away and you're left to live life with a void that you never really anticipated. For some reason, people never talk about the parts of you that die when your loved one leaves the earth. It's so easy to lose who you are in the midst of all of this. I lost myself because I forgot to love myself. I'd like to take you on a journey in hopes that you can learn how to love you more. Wow. To check out the first episode, log on to loveyoumore.com. And then now it's like, how do how do you get back in ministry when it feels like everybody knows yeah. what happened? The, Estee Lauder. God put me in a place where complete strangers fell in love with Kim. Yeah. Not the preacher, not the it preacher's kid. I wasn't even a preacher then. I never even preached my first sermon until I was 41. Really? No. And I... People. Sat there and would hear stories, man, of those people that would come back in there and say, I don't know what you did, but you made me get up. You made me get up. You made me, you made me, I've been going to a counselor for 13 years. And that last Friday, when I sat in your chair, you did something. I went and canceled my, my therapist. Every Friday, I'm going to come sit back in your chair. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> no. I remember I was selling so much, as, so many lip glosses because I didn't know how to put no makeup on nobody. I was just putting makeup. Like, I was telling them, man, you're so beautiful. You don't even need no makeup. <laughs> your, your cheekbones are just floating. God had extra time when, when he, he was creating you. you. You don't even need it. They you were just, just like sitting there feeling like they were the most beautiful thing ever. And yeah. I was just putting some, some little lip gloss on them. <laughs> Estee Lauder execs were coming. Kim, I don't know what you're doing, but you sell more lip glosses than anybody we've ever seen. I, I said, if you makeup. only knew. <laughs> I can't do makeup, but I'm a lip gloss. But it, it showed me that I went through everything that I went through for them. And I could still be used. And then I realized that if I never, ever, ever, I never dreamed I was going to be pastor in a church. Mm. I never dreamed in a million years that God would qualify me to write five books and they sell what? I got oh, a six-figure yeah. book deal last year. Three times divorced. <laughs> Girl said, three you times know what I'm divorced. saying? Like I, I literally, 
am on flyers as a relationship expert. Is that not funny? That's how God is. He is the kind of God that will take your mess and turn it into a message. He knew before me and you were ever even a thought in our mother's womb, Willie Moore Jr., He knew that we were going to hit rock bottom and find out who the rock is at the bottom, which is Jesus. And he knew it was going to be without us at an altar call. He knew it was going to be in the back out there with a cigarette in our hands, feeling like with the whole world's waiting on us to not mess up or to, or to get back up again. They don't know we're crying out here, trying to drink a two or three bottles of wine just to get through because we're being judged. If we walked out on a mistake we made, he knew that. And he said, when you get up, man, you're going to be able to pull people out of hell that nobody else in the church could ever, ever touch. Mm. He knew that. Yes, Lord. And so that's what he did for me. He let me work at Bloomingdale's and Belk, where I thought I had lost my ever-loving mind and it became my pulpit. That's so good. It became my pulpit, man. And I love, fell in love with people. I went from hating people to loving people. Mm -hmm. And I started doing these videos in my car. (laughs) <laughs> what was the moment when you realized that online ministry was going to be more beneficial than the traditional ways that you've seen it? Well, you know, Willie Moore, like I was working at Bloomingdale's and I was coming out of my pit. Like I felt myself coming out. So I was starting to encourage myself every day going to work. One hour coming to work, one hour going to work. I'd be listening to T.D. Jakes. Get it, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Yeah. So I was thinking like, oh, I'm I'm saved. Like I'm healed. Yeah. Uh, if a mosquito bit me right now, I'll get the Holy Ghost, you know. <laughs> I let a man slide in my DMs uh-huh. and met him twice. Mm-hmm. Still working at Bloomingdale's, not preaching, barely even going to church still. Mm-hmm. And this dude slid in my DMs, met him twice, married him. That's this the, the third one. <laughs> Ball head. Yes. Dude. So in that no, let me tell you. Okay, <laughs> so I've been knowing her for. A I gotta minute. tell y'all this. I know I've been knowing her for. It's a gonna minute. make y'all feel better about I yourself know for a minute now. You know I ain't want to say nothing. I was just like, but I started to see a different Kim coming out. Cause you know you could tell when somebody with somebody because they start looking like the somebody. You know a little bit more calm or whatever. And I must have popped on one day. I said, Oh, she ain't with him no more. <laughs> And it wasn't no disrespect, because I, you know, don't get me wrong, I seemed to like him because he was bald head. I still got videos online right now that said, oh, you got a bald head, brother. It's good, it's good, it's good. Only thing missing is a beard. You know, I would say that all the time. So what happened there? I, I thought you guys had known each other forever because he was an older gentleman. No, I, you know what? I was still at Bloomingdale's and I thought I, I wanted a dad. You know, my dad had been diagnosed with dementia. Uh, I wanted my kids to have a father. Yeah. And I was, this dude slid in my DMs and I wasn't, I was still at Bloomingdale's. I was starting to come out of my pit, but I was still broken. I'm obviously a, a glutton for love. You are. I want to love. I, thought, you know, I, thought, <laughs> I mean, you did love him. I won't lie. I did. did. And, and I am one of those loyalist person, you yeah, know? Yeah. So uh, we got married and I am, I met him twice, married him. And How long it take for y'all to get married? Lord. It, it, Kim going all in. <laughs> <laughs> she at the casino like. All my dang chips. Here go gotta, all my damn chips. I gotta chips. tell it. Like, I gotta play tell a half it. a chip, Kim. I gotta tell it because it's in my new book that just released. You gotta get up. You know, oh, put the little screen. So you thing gotta on tell it. it. Well, I'm, you told all this in the book. Look, I tell everything. Well, because if anybody comes out uh, with anything, they've already heard it. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and, and I'm ho- and I'm a hopeful message. So here's how it happened. So after we were married, um, I started I started really getting free. Probably about three years after we got married, I started really listening to T.D. Jakes. So you like T.D.? I like T.D. Like, he was my voice. I think everybody has a voice. Yeah. Don't you think? So who's your voice? Bishop Who, Bronner. Yeah, Bishop Bronner. I love yeah. Bishop Bronner, too. Yeah. He's stable. Yeah. Uh, so he was my voice in that season. And he started bringing me out of this pit. And I was started doing these videos. And I was driving like a knockoff Bentley. Uh, which Chrysler is like a 300, 300 Chrysler. Yeah, I already knew what you <laughs> And had. it kept me sitting but on the side of the road. you kept it clean, Huh? You kept it clean, though. I kept it clean because I believe your insides <laughs> look like your car. <laughs> oh, don't make me run. Stop, Kim. I was like, no, we go, we go prophesy with the inside of the car. You hear mm. me? Yes, Lord. And it was sitting on the side of the, of the road one day, and I did a video. And, and that video went viral. So it was three years after we were, me and him were married, and that video went viral. And I'm talking like... Oh man, like a hundred thousand people overnight. And it wasn't even that good, Willie Moore. It was just like a white woman with a mohawk. You did have a mohawk. <laughs> and I was like, hello, awesome people. Are you sitting on the side of the road in your knockoff hoopty? I remember thinking God forgot about you. Crystal Lee showed me that video, I think, or because you know we used to look online and stuff and I see that. <laughs> and I it went viral. 
You and still so, wear wild hair and glasses. Listen, and, I look like somebody's auntie. You was, was fly then. You was fly for then. This is flyer. Let's get that out the way. But you know what? It worked then. Remember, yeah. I was preaching in tutus too. Yep, I remember the tutus <laughs> with the little woo wah wham. I've all, there's always been a method to my madness. Okay, then I got on Preachers of Atlanta like two years that. later. That's that's when that's when I actually seen you vulnerable. Yeah, you weren't Superwoman then. because it was just so much. <sighs> I remember, I remember you, you gave me some of the greatest advice. Then. I remember you came in and you was like, do you think it's good? Do you think it's going to be good? I was just like, it don't matter. You're good. Oh, I was, I, 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 people were throwing me under the bus, man. I remember yeah. that's when my marriage really went down the hill. It, it went to hell in a handbasket. So how long, and I'm going to let you tell the story, but how long was it that when I met him, when, when you all came, he was just so supportive, kind of in the back. Yeah, so wonderful. It was when I went on Preachers of Atlanta, everything flipped. It was like when, when I got known, he couldn't handle it. His character couldn't keep up with my purpose. Love you more, love you more, love you more. You probably fish grease hot right now. I promise you. That episode was so good. But listen, be on the lookout for part two coming up next Sunday. Well, literally, we covered this up. And something about hitting rock bottom and finding out who the rock is at the bottom. I like me that. That was a bar. Like she did. That was a bar. And of course, we also tackled the fact that I'm Petty LaBelle. She had commented on somebody who was against me, Paige, and I told her this. I'm praying for you, sis. And I was like, okay, I don't like look, real talk here. No. no. I literally did. I was just like... <laughs> I don't like her no more. Ain't no need to be in fake about it. You know I'm going to keep it real. Flat out. And of course, Real Talk Kim is just extremely inspiring. So she said this. I'm probably the, the person that feels like one of my callings is to love people through divorce. Mm -hmm. Because God does not take his hand off of us because of a divorce. And don't forget to check this out. I do want to ask you this. You've been married three times. Um, and I just re read about radical restoration. Is your heart posture to be in another relationship? And you know I had to ask the question that you have been waiting for. <laughs> so you come out with a lot of posts that's so strong. I mean strong posts too. Do you think you get away with that type of like attitude besides the anointing because you do have white skin? Because I think if black women <laughs> did the same thing, it'd be like angry black woman. You see angry black woman? <laughs> hey family, make sure you tune in to part two next Sunday. But to those of you who want to see it early, I want you to go in this particular link, click Patreon, and the entire Real Talk Kim interview will be available right now. Okay? So go click that Patreon, become a part of our community, and you're going to have it. Subscribe, comment, like. I'll see you next week. Love you more. Love you more.